Welcome to episode five of this Let's Play series of Rule the Waves 3. My name is Daz Tactic. Welcome to the channel and welcome to the series. Um, yeah, if you, do, if you are enjoying this, please consider liking and subscribing. I know this sort of content is quite nuanced. This is, we're essentially playing uh, Aurora 4X, but for <laughs> naval technology simulations in the, uh, in the age of the ironclads at this point in time. So it's, uh, it's an interesting, but it is a very, very interesting game. I, I really, I love what the game does in the realism of what it does. You know, like we're, we're playing in an era where the um, the gunnery on our on our big ships is just absolutely terrible, and that's sort of <laughs> historically accurate. Uh, so you know, we, we've got to th when we go and uh, we'll be designing some ships. I will start designing a basic type of ship in this episode. We're going to be doing the AMCs, the armed merchant uh, cruisers. Uh, so we're going to be building a couple of those. I'll, I'll talk through the nuance of those in the game, and uh, then we'll sort of get into it. Uh, you know, it, it will, uh, later on I'll actually do a full blown uh, a single video, basically that goes through the um, through the the design of ships because there's a lot involved. You know, with what we can see, and it's great to have been able to play a few different battles to see how terrible our battleships are for example, um, to sort of see how the cruiser went in the last battle for, you know, and actually sunk two ships. So things like that, you know, we, there's, there's pros and cons about stuff. And I think that the more you play it, the more sort of you understand just the little tweaks that sort of make a big difference in the actual game itself. Anyway, um, I did actually end the last episode off, and I know that many people aren't wa don't watch videos till the very, very end. So I thought I'd actually just do that, what we what we ended off doing again, which was to plan an invasion. And so we're playing, of course, in the Mediterranean through here, and uh, particularly in the Adriatic, this is where most of the action has sort of taken place. You know, I think the furthest that we've gone down has been just outside Taranto, uh, but most of it has been happening up through here around Pola. Uh, and, and Kona, uh, Venezia. So, you know, like in the first battle, I think our ships limped back home into, into Venice. And, uh, and so that's sort of where the action has been taking place. But we can actually invade. And so I do want to just go through how we prepare an invasion. Now, an invasion requires you to have like a, a dominance of force in the region. And we actually do have that. A couple of things. I might just show even more things. I hope that you don't mind that I've been sort of drip feeding the information, I guess, of the game uh, in this series rather than just trying to talk about everything in one go. I've, I've been trying to think of how can I show a game that's got a high level of complexity, but in a way that you don't have to, you don't have to know much about it to still have fun with it. Uh, anyway, and it's uh, one of the things we can have a quick look in here is the strength bars. If I go and click these on, it then shows the, um, the relative strength of the different countries in the region. And you can see through there, we're actually dominating uh, back in through this area. Uh, so we've got Italy is sort of, is by far the, by far the strongest, followed by um, Austria-Hungary, followed by, uh, by England. No one else has really got a presence in the Mediterranean. So you can go to any of these, any of the different areas around the world actually and have a bit of a look at when you've got this, those bars turned on. That's interesting. Spain has actually got a presence there to a couple of battleships uh, I wonder why it would go there. That's interesting. And Russia is dominating this part of the uh, part of the map. Um, yeah, Germany really isn't doing much there. Um, you know, Germany is sort of a little bit weak in comparison. It really is uh, England and France. It's, it's you know to, to get a bit of a snapshot through these uh, through these bars is quite cool. U.S. is, uh, of course, you'd expect it being through there. Spain is um, is trying to sort of dominate a little bit in through the side. It gets a bit ugly. <laughs> it's sort of almost with this turned on, you almost need like a little bar underneath it just to sort of uh, make it so you can see what's going on. But Spain and, Spain and England back in through that side. Um, no one really any presence around South America. Uh, South Africa also the same. Uh, England back in West Africa. England and Russia down in the Indian Ocean. Uh, this would be interesting, actually. The um, what's actually Russia has is dominating what's actually happening up in this region of the of the world. This is the Northeast Pacific. Uh, we should see yeah, Spain, England, France are dominating in the Southeast Asia, Central Pacific, the U.S., England. Uh, wow, actually, oh, it's not not dramatic, but they they do actually have a presence back through there. Again, it's sort of uh, Germany looks to be sort of uh, struggling a bit here. With what's going on, anyway, that's all fine. So uh, we've got, of course, the um, you know where we actually are, which is which is what we're sort of interested in. So we do actually have a dominance of force in the uh, in the Mediterranean, 
And so we can, if we wanting to, actually then try to sort of do an invasion. Now, you can't really invade home territory. So this is, um, you can see when I hover over this area, the possession is Austria-Hungary, the owner is Austria-Hungary, and it's saying home area. So we can't really do much with that one. But the next one down here, this next flag is Dalmatia. Uh, the owner is Austria-Hungary, and it's a value four. So it's limited value. It does have a base capacity of 60. One battery is being sort of uh, allocated into that particular region. I wish the... Um, tooltips would stay up a bit longer than this uh, and I've turned off the targeting because we I haven't actually ended the turn since the, since we did it last time if I go and click on that it then brings up Dalmatia I can do this for any of the uh, any of these zones by the way I can go into our zone in through here what sort of uh, batteries we actually have the base capacity um, whether it's got oil etc etc you know all the different sorts of things we sort of see in through that side so Dalmatia is probably an area that we, we can consider invading, uh, which would actually be fairly cool. So let's just go and, uh, and do that. The one thing I'm concerned about is that uh, when we actually have a look at the, at, at the forces that we have, we've got three battleships against their five battleships. Where we actually have an advantage is in the light cruisers and the armoured cruisers, because we did actually sink their ships last time, or we certainly damaged them. In fact, um, yeah, they've, they've only got battleships left. This may be an advantage to us, but for an invasion, uh, we're going to have to break through those battleships with our three. So it's not fantastic. Now, if we if we close this one off and just go to ships under construction, we've got two months before the Vittorio Emanuel uh, is built, four months before the Regina Margarita is then built as well, and then another 23 months before we get our next armed, uh, armed cruiser. So again... If I wait a couple, we're then going to have like a, a bit of a quality in terms of the actual number of battleships we actually have. But the battleships are really crappy in this era, like, you know, the ones that we actually are using at the start of the game. So we will have to do something about that. We've got the three, we've got the Italia, the Napoli, and the Re uh, Regina Alina are all sort of, we'll, we'll all be ready to sort of help to push in a... Um, an actual attack. So we actually do have, this one's still actually working up as well. So we've got a couple more months, I think, before that one becomes available. But look, I might as well start the invasion process at this stage, even though I'm not really ready for it. So we'll just see how it goes. It's probably not a great idea, to be honest, but let's just do it anyway. So I'm just gonna go and click on Dalmatia. Uh, I'm gonna now set it as an invasion target. Now, what we'll see is our monthly balance is 415. The target is, we've got none selected over through there, and there's no cost selected in here. So we'll just set the invasion target. And so we now got Dalmatia, the cost is 406, and so our, our monthly balance is now coming less. So we're now preparing for the invasion of Dalmatia, and we can do that because we do actually have the dominant force in the region uh, against the group that we're at war with. So this is actually where we'll sort of end up, end up going uh, to try to sort of you know cross over. Now, in terms of what we can do through here, um, the next little button that we see over through here is show the invasion range. We ha can only invade within a certain distance of, and it depends again on, on the um, technology of the day as to what that range is. But if I go and click that one on, you'll see there that all of the, these are all the areas that we could invade. Uh, these within, and they, they extend from our ports. So Dalmatia is definitely easily within the actual port range. You can see even if, if some of these other locations like Albania and Greece, uh, these would be inside our invasion range. If we tried to invade like a place like this would be right on the cusp. I don't know if we could actually do that one. Not that we, we can't invade these neutrals anyway. Uh, all we can do is, is, is there will be events that will come up from time to time where the great powers will then try to, um, to dominate them. And we'll definitely be trying to do that uh, in the course of this particular Let's Play. Uh, so roads would be a difficult one for us in through there. Of course, invading uh, invading the um, Great Britain in Egypt, sorry, in Egypt would be a very, very difficult unless we actually do get Libya. So if we can get Libya, that would be ideal to get like Benghazi and Tobruk that would then open up this part of the Mediterranean for invasion as well so it, it does open up the map if we can if we can sort of get an event that and we can't force that the game will just do that of its own volition uh, so we just have to wait for that one anyway let's turn off the graphs let's turn off the ranges and uh, we'll just now wait for uh, for this invasion so it will then just there's a random uh, you know event that will trigger now that we're trying to invade, and the fact that we actually do have such a big advantage now in terms of firepower in the region, um, it's going to be interesting when the fight does go in. So anyway, that's that's one thing. 
So that's the first little bit. So uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about is uh, is armed merchant cruisers. And we can go and build one of those straight away. If I go to build ships, uh, you can see there I don't actually have an AMC designation through here. I do actually have like the Corvettes, which are sort of a little bit like it, but they're not really. And so I'm just going to go and cancel those. We're going to go and design our own AMC. Uh, and there's some weird little rules around the AMCs. And I'm a bit scratchy on exactly how they work. But anyway, I'll, I'll talk about them. Because we're at war, we can basically employ them. Uh, we have a limit of two that we can use. And then after the war ends, we lose those ships. But let's just do it anyway. So we're just going to go to design the ship. Um, it always starts off, even though we can't build a dreadnought, for example, if I go and click the plus, it'll then say, you know, there's different sorts of problems. I will go through in a lot of detail how to do this, but let's just get the AI to help us out. So if we go across to the drop down and through here, and so this will be just a, you know, how to, how to get the AI to do this for you. This will be the, the basic way of doing it. And then we actually do have an AMC armed, armed merchant cruiser appears in the list. So we'll go and grab that one through there. Now, um, we can start to try to build this, but there are limitations to building an AMC. So if we just go across and just click on the auto design ship of, of the selected type, it will the game will then go and build that for us. And so what it's done is it's built an, an, uh, an AMC, an armed merchant cruiser here, that's got a few different sorts of guns. It's got six, um, six inch guns, which is not bad actually. If we make it less, so five is still negative one, uh, four inches is is um, quality zero. I'm actually tempted to go more that style. Now, the, the actual guns, if I try to make it go bigger than, say, six inches, I think if I go to seven and then click the plus, um, cannot be identified as any legal type. So it, it doesn't like that particular identification. If we make it go down to six again and then click the plus, it's all okay. So an armed merchant cruiser cannot have more than seven inch, uh, six inch guns. Uh, it, it before, I think it may be before 1925. So that's the maximum. But we, all we're doing with, these, with this particular ship is trying to get it to, um, to raid. We're going to use it for raiding purposes, not so much as a, uh, as a combat ship. So I might bring it down to the four inch guns where we don't have any quality issues. The quality issues really do impact what does go on. You can see through here, it's got a speed of 18, which makes it fairly fast. 4,000 displacement is, is fairly high, actually, for what it actually is. And these are not built from scratch. That's important to understand. These are actually, these are like liners that have been uh, that have been taken into service. And we can make them much, much smaller. Like if we wanted to have like a very, very small ship or whatever we want to do, we can sort of, we can tweak things as we go. Now we've got like a lot of extra weight remaining in through here. The range is medium range. So with a, with an, uh, with a cruiser, like an armed merchant cruiser, I don't think we're allowed to do short. I'll just have a quick look and see. Yep, this uh, note the ship has short range, which might actually we are, we can still do it if it says no, we can do it. But typically, uh, you would be going medium or even long range. Long range is going to make it so that the weight would just go way too crazy because we then need to have like we'd be carrying a lot more coal and um, and so on and so forth. The, the hull and fittings would then sort of go up. If we go back to medium, you'll see that the, the weight then does come back down to uh, to acceptable numbers. Um, machinery and weight. Now we could also then have things, for example, like you'll notice that there's no actual um, armor on this thing at all. Uh, I think I can still actually put some armor on it. Like if I do that and then check it. Um, yeah, actually, so so uh, it's now been identified as, an, as a light cruiser. It's no longer a liner. It's because it's now got armor. So we can't do any armor at all. <laughs> so there we go. I'm not exactly sure of exactly what the parameters are for these things. Anyway, this is, um, I just want something that's going to be relatively fast. Also, another thing that's a limitation, again, if I click on that one, it's all okay there. If I change the, um, the speed, if I make the speed, say, 22, and then click it, it says error, AMC cannot have speed above 21 knots before 1925, and it's also seriously overweight. So uh, it's not legal, so that's so we can't go that speed. Um, I'll keep it back down to the 18, or even, could even go lower? No, I'll keep it where it is. Uh, accommodation is normal, that's all okay. So this is essentially just a liner that's going to be taken on board, but we can only have a maximum of two to 
simulate, and every country only has a maximum of two, to simulate that that's the ships that it can then bring across. So I've got the sun shining on me now. So, <laughs> so I'm a, a bit... bit um, Got a bit of uh, a bit of a bit of sunlight sort of coming coming in through the window. Um, all right, so this, that this is sort of so without going into too much detail, this one gives us a fair bit of weight remaining. We may be able to just tweak the uh, the displacement down a little bit. Um, you can see I've been able to get it down 81. I really don't want to be going to. I want to get be getting it as small as possible just to keep the pricing down. So you can see there the total the total amount in through this side, like the cost and the weight. Uh, it's more the um, uh, it's more the cost. I just want to sort of try to get this cost down and still keep it sort of legal. And you see it's it's changing as it goes. I'm, I'm happy enough to have the six guns. I could actually change. We've got the port wing, starboard wing. So we really are looking at um, at guns. that There's no center line through this one. It, it, it really is just putting guns on the on the side of a, of a, um, of a liner, uh, an existing liner. We're down to 3,000 displacement now. Can we go even lower? Actually, we can. We can get this thing. It's actually the weight remaining is actually coming right, right down now. Um, yeah, as we come back down, we've actually been able to get something that's actually now we're getting a problem with the uh, with the actual with the size. If I just go and click on plus, yep, can't identify. I think it may have to be fifteen hundred. Nope, still doesn't like that one. Just try nineteen hundred and see if it if that will accept it. Yeah, all okay at, at eighteen hundred. So it's in around here somewhere. 1700 nope can't identify that <laughs> 1800 yes okay so the smallest we can actually do this is an 1800 for the uh, for the AMC now that does change over time uh, class name um, I can I can just have it sort of suggest names if I wanted to but I, I'm happy enough with that one there and so this is um, this one gives us a little bit of extra weight in there that's that's sort of okay I can't really change that that's the smallest this thing can actually be Um Everything else is looking pretty good here, I think. I mean, I may be able to even push the weight up a little bit. Sorry, the, the speed. I get up to 19, and that still actually sort of then works. Rounds, I can push the rounds up a little bit as well. Just double check that that's still all okay. Yep, that's fine. So we've got ourselves a fairly small little cruiser in through here, an armed merchant cruiser. Um, the, the total cost is 2400 that's okay. Uh, we've got a fair bit of money. We've got 11,000 back in through there. So let's just save and finish this one. So this will be the Ravina um, done. All okay. And uh, ship ship design saved as Ravina. Do you want to go to the building dialogue? Yes, we do. And so here we can now go and build the Ravina. So we sort of used the auto and then just tweaked things down. And the reason I went for the four inch guns is because I'm going to be using this for rating purposes and not so much for anything else. So it's a fairly small ship. I do actually have a, a, a Corvette that's smaller. In fact, I've got a couple of Corvettes that are smaller, but the AMC is right on the on the, on the the uh, limit of what it can actually then get up to. And it's got a reasonable speed. So this is actually not a bad bad little design. Um, let's go and build. We can, I don't know if it'll allow us to build three. <laughs> we're not supposed to be building three. Uh, and I haven't tested this in the game. I know that we're allowed to build two. We'll just do what we're allowed to. Just click on OK. And so they're now being built. I'll, we'll, I'll let's just see what happens if we do go to build. I can always then just re remove it from in here as well. But just go and right click, go to, um, actually, we'll just go down to build ship down in here. Build ship, AMC, one, click on OK. Uh, now it did actually do it there. You can see there that these can be built really quickly. And this is the advantage of actually converting these across, but I'm, I'm not supposed to be allowed to have, maybe I'm allowed to have more than two in, not in peacetime. I, I can't remember exactly how it works. Let's get all three of these. And so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll bring these across. You can see that the monthly balance is going backwards now because of this, but that's going to be okay. We'll be able to cope with this one because it's only four months and then we're going to have three essentially and I don't think I feel it'll let us do this one but that's going to be the uh, they'll, they'll be the AMC so this is a fast way if you need to get ships that are reasonable into your fleet AMCs is a good way to go and of course um, countries did that you know for you know throughout the 20th century basically converting these across and particularly around the World War Two era World War One era these merchant raiders were really, really uh, important and um, you know, they, they fulfilled a very important role. So anyway, that's going to be, so we're going to essentially um, 
take over a few of the existing um, civilian ships and convert them across. That is done. Right, so we're sort of now done with all of that one. We, everything else is ready to go. Let's just end the turn, see what the next mission is that we're going to be doing. Okay, we've got a fleet battle. Here we go. This may be, I don't think this is part of the invasion. We've got two battleships. Now, our own force in the area is two battleships, one uh, armed cruiser and five light cruisers. The uh, the estimated enemy forces are five battleships and three AMCs. So they, they've they employed AMCs as well, but they may not be AMCs. We don't know that just yet. So uh, accept battle. Um, I'll, I will accept. This is going to be an interesting battle. Oh, they declined. Great. We've got another 600. Uh, this is a coastal raid. So the uh, the enemy is um, is Austria Hungary. Um, now I don't know if this is us. We will accept this one. Coastal raids will be good for us. Now let's have a look and see what this one does give us. We haven't actually had a coastal raid before. We've got uh, one battleship and one light cruiser. The Taranto again has uh, has come back in. Actually, do we have a played with a Taranto before? Just trying to see where the uh, if there's an objective that's been that's been allocated to us. I uh, can't see it there. It's 12:30 in the afternoon already. So um, if we have a bit of a look to see how much time before it becomes night time. Okay, dusk will be in six hours and 40 minutes. So we've got limited time there to do it, but that's that will be okay. We I don't think we're defending. Um, let's have a look and see. The objectives are oh, enemy coastal raid. Okay, so the enemy is raiding our coast. So it looks like they're going to be coming down into towards Bari and uh, they're possibly sort of taking on one of these uh, locations. We've got a fair few spots down this way uh, where we actually do have um, uh, different batteries. There's an installation there. So um, it may be going after this particular installation. So they'll be raiding in trying to sort of do damage. Um, you know, we've got another installation there. So I'm not exactly sure where this will actually be. So uh, with our two, two different ships that we actually have, we'll um, just go to the order of battle. So what have we got? We've got the, um, the Italian, yes, yeah, so we've got all of these different things. We've got merchant divisions also in that region, around in this region. Okay, so we've got a few different, a uh, few lowly old merchant ships in around through there. And we've got the, um, so we'll, we'll just protect this area. It looks like Bari is gonna be where we need to be uh, set up. The, um, we've got the battle division, which will be the one battleship, the Italia, and then we have the uh, Taranto is the light cruiser. So I'm going to leave the I'll leave the battleship sort of floating around in down below. Now we need to keep these ones fairly fairly contained uh, within each other. Uh, let's have a look and see what they're doing. They're independent, and their formation is line ahead, which doesn't really matter if they're independent. So I'll just cancel that one. This one here is considered to be independent as well. So uh, we'll just have a quick look and see which way they're heading. They're both heading in the same direction. Uh, 12 knots and 12 knots should be okay. Let's just press Q and let the game run forward. There we go. We're seeing more merchant ships down this way. Sort of run forward. So we're just going at normal game speed at this point in time. And just sort of hover over something and it'll then show up. So where are you, Raiders? Okay, so we haven't seen anything just yet. This is our visual range. I'll keep on going a little bit longer. Back to the log. I mean, if they're getting behind us, it wouldn't wouldn't be good, but. You know, we've, we, the visual range should be okay. By the way, it's partially cloudy, so the weather is partially cloudy. The it's a, only a light breeze from the west, so you can see there the west in through there. Uh, day sighting range is twenty-seven thousand at the stage. So um, and then night time will be four thousand meters. Oh, sorry, four thousand yards. Quite often, when you just start the game off, it'll just do its own thing. Now we're still are not seeing anything else just yet. So. Um, I might change the direction of each of these, so I'm just going to press sh shift and this one as well. I just want to keep them within visual range of each other. Okay, so Q. And we'll just move back and forwards out through here and wait, see if we can sort of spot the enemy ships. They may be even coming in through this other side. 
In fact, what I might do is I might just press space and then just go and grab this one. Actually, no, I do want to keep them together. I'll just keep them sort of running together. I need them in support of each other. Well, it actually wouldn't hurt to um, to move this one off just a little bit. And yeah, we do want to sort of keep them together. Otherwise, I can't control them. Ah, unknown ship sighted. Great. Here we go. Here we go. So they're actually down this way. All right. So we uh, we have now identified one ship. In that case, we will bring this one back through, and we'll start to now bring this one down. I'm just going to push it in this direction. So I press Shift which gives me the little crosshairs and then click. I can do the same thing by clicking on this and doing that way. Uh, this one in here, I will actually also just uh, shift click and we'll just see what we end up finding. So that one's coming directly towards us. No idea what this is just yet. So we'll just press um, Q and then space, two ships. So um, it's identified the first ship as a pre-dreadnought coming back in. Now hopefully there won't be too many of them. Uh, I'm just doing it minute by minute now. So it's uh, got a small ship down through this side. We've got the Monarch class there. If I just keep the battleship moving down this way and um, and we'll go off, we'll just keep it We'll keep the other one coming in to take on whatever this small ship is, which we know it's not going to be a cruiser because we've now destroyed all of the cruisers of Austria-Hungary at this point in time. Um, so just do it bit by bit. Oh, it's, it's a uh, so it's a Corvette, the Elano class. Now we know that our light cruisers can certainly do damage against the uh, against the other ships. So if we have a bit of a look, we've got ourselves a um, five inch guns and the zero means that we've got some accuracy with them. And, and I'm actually happy with that. Um, and also we've got the uh, secondary guns, we've got three inch tertiary guns, we've got two inch. And so these are all guns that we're going to be able to do good damage against Corvettes with these because Corvettes won't have a real lot of armor. We've got two inch belt armor. We've got one and a half inch deck armor and two inch turret armor. And uh, I forget what CT is for a oh, conning tower. The conning tower has got four inch armor, which is a bit of overkill, I think, uh, for the conning tower. Uh, if we have a look at the Alano class, we can see that it does have two, two inch belt and two inch deck. So, you know, it's actually fairly well armored. It's using six inch guns, which is about the maximum of a um, Corvette. So it, it's got bigger caliber guns that can do some damage to us. And then they've only got like the two, two, three inch guns. So overall, we should be pretty good against this one, even though it does have some pretty heavy hitting power. Uh, let's just keep on going. And it's now trying to run away behind the other Monarch class. What we'll do is we'll just come back in. So it was heading in towards this installation. Okay, so we did actually guess the right direction at least. Now, they will have a slightly bigger range than us, I think. Just keep things sort of working. Might have a look and see if we can... Yeah, okay, the guns are a center line abreast, a center line uh, gun, sorry. Uh, we'll now move in towards this one here. The Monarch has, sorry, the, yeah, the Monarch has now turned around, which is interesting. So it's setting up for the Taranto. In which case, I will actually now move away from the Monarch and we'll just leave the Italia to, um, to start to come in a bit as well. Let's just move back around this way. The Italia will keep on moving in. Now, the Monarch class has got um, the three big guns. Um, so it's got three 12 inch guns, six, six inch, and 10 two inch. So we do have to be careful of this one. Uh, it travels, it's traveling, it's, oh, it's got 16 knots that it can travel in, nine inch belt armor and one and a half inch deck armor. It's, if we can, the belt armor, we're not, we're gonna, it's gonna be impervious to our, to our light cruiser, essentially, if it does hit the belt. Uh, the, our, the Italia, though, has actually got very, very strong belt armor. So this is our ship. 
it does have the um, it's got a weird configuration with what it can do I, I meant to show this actually um, the configuration of what what our guns can actually range to uh, in fact we may be able to do it if I go through to um, let's add notes she maybe not I thought we could actually sort of look at these if we look at the um, order of battle and look at the Italia um, No, it's not. Um, this is sort of how we set things up, really. But it's um, yeah, I can actually give it a different direction. But anyway, the the Italia is coming back down. Um, the Taranto. If I can just get some shots away on the uh, on the Alino, I might actually move in a lot closer. Okay, we're now doing firing again. Our ship does actually have. It's mainly going to be broadsides is what we need to be trying to do here. So we're, um, if we look at the log, I don't think there's been any other log reports just yet. Sighting, yeah, we're identifying. We are now targeting at the uh, Elena. Let's just keep it coming this way. Uh, we're now targeting the um, the battleship. And so the Taranto does open fire on the Monarch class. And we're going to be wanting to then move away a little bit as well. I might just get our speed up a little bit. So let's just get up to, say, 16. And uh, this is now the, the ship that's now um, in, in the lead. We want to get around the other side of this and allow the Italia to then go and do the, do the damage over here. Sorry, I'll just go and click that one. This is still a long way away from the battle. Uh, so we'll, just, we'll sort of zip in a little bit, see if we can get some shots in. Uh, if we can get some hits with, like we'll be firing a lot more regularly than the uh, than the Monarch will, and the Elano as well will will not have any near the firepower of of the light cruiser. But I don't want the light cruiser to get too close to the battleship. It will then be firing at us, so it fires at us. We can have a bit of a look to see where the uh, where the splashes occur. Uh, nothing there yet. We're still actually firing away. In through there, we can see that we've got like splashing just in front of the ship, which is interesting. I'll keep the um, I'll keep the angle going at this point in time. Yeah, so there's there's were short. So so when they attacked, they actually attacked a bit short. We'll just do one more. Oh, it's now moved away. Um, so it's going to now move. It's going to lose the angle that it had on us. We're firing with our secondary and tertiary guns at this stage. And I'll just keep it at normal. So I might just go down to slow speed now. I love this aspect of the game, even though it's there's not a like it's it's there's so hard to get a hit, get a lucky hit in, and and you know all sorts of things can actually happen. And I sort of like our odds, even though we've got like a, a gun that isn't really going to be able to do the job. It it just feels it it's a it's a if the game feels very very good. Uh, okay, let's when they're now gearing up to attack us with their broadsides. So they're now sort of lining us up. Uh, they've got uh, their, their secondary guns are now sort of going to be firing at us. Uh, we're firing through their, their own smoke, um, which is a bit of a problem. Let's move off our line now because we now need to upset what they're aiming at. So it makes it more difficult for them. There we go. So there's more splashing now around our ship. Just let it go a little bit longer. Actually, if we have a quick look at the log report, when did they fire? In uh, 1519. And that was... Actually, where is that local time? 1629 at the moment. So that's... Oh, hang on. 15... Yeah, so this is... That was a while back. So they're just using their secondary and tertiary guns to fire at us. Yep, so there's more secondary tertiary going in. Same back in through there. I can't quite catch this one up. Let's let's go in again, change our angles. So we want to be we want to be sort of changing uh, direction every so often, just to keep their guns without really being able to get shots in on us. When we do it. And then we fire. You can see there that there's more going in now. They should be getting ready to fire again with their big guns. It's been about five or six minutes, I think, since they fired. 
So let's now move it away again. And I don't really want to be taking on this uh, Monarch class. Um, it's more the Ilano that I'd like to try to get to with the uh, with the, the cruiser. It hasn't fired at us for a while. It's firing with the secondary guns, which is what we're sort of seeing with these, but not the big guns. The secondary guns will do some damage at this range, I think, but you know, I think we're still sort of okay. Let's just sort of go forward. Why are we not firing? All the broadsides are ready to go. They're just not sort of uh, kicking in just yet. Oh, here we go. Now that's no, that's still sec that's a secondary guns, I think. So big splashes. Do one more. It's now moved away. Let's go and um, change our angle. We'll then force it to go around the other way. It's trying to get we're a bit risky now where we are. Uh, might move this one off. It's coming around. Just lining us up. Now we're moving away, which sort of gives us a, a, a smaller target at us. We'll now move around again. And we now can go through and get the uh, Elano. Sorrento opens fire at the Elano class. So we're now sort of uh, aiming for this one. Uh, if we can get in close, I think we can go as close as we like because we know that this one won't have any torpedoes. And torpedoes really are the thing we have to be a bit careful of. It's firing back at us. It's now moving away. Let's just see how fast this one's moving. This one's moving at 15. We're going at 16. Let's ramp it up to, say, 18 and, and really close the gap here. Now there will be some shots coming back in. Remember, they've got a couple of um, they've got a couple of six-inch guns and a couple of three-inch. Depending on the on the range, the six the six-inch can definitely do some damage against us. Three-inch, not so much. So I've just got my phone beeping. I'll be just one second. All right, we are back. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, I'm going to keep on having this one come across. Uh, maybe now to mask more against the Monarch. Looks like the Monarch may have, have had enough. The Ilano is trying to get away, but it's not going to be able to do much. Still splashes going in around us. Yeah, we're firing like the, the five-inch guns at the Ilano class, so we've, um, if we have a look at our ships, uh, really, we're not going to. We're only really going to have the front, sh the front gun, uh, firing away. I think. I don't know if these can actually get there to it uh, as well, but we'll, um, we will find out. Let's just go back and grab this one again. Yeah, we're getting in nice and close now. Now this one should have possibly taken some damage. Not yet. So we'll now move across and travel with it. We can now get some broadsides on it. We should now start to see the cannons, the guns now start to sort of, yeah, they're now all aiming from this, from the side of the ship. Just trying to shorten that angle. So we fire one five inch gun. Yeah, is that the biggest we have? Yeah, we've got two five-inch guns, one at the back, one at the front. We can sort of see the angle. So it's now shortened the angle enough so that we don't get the broadsides in from the from the other side. Uh, but let's just let's now open that angle up again. And 
I should just make it so that this is a bit wider. I wish we would remember the, the width so we can sort of just keep it so we can have a look to see what's going on here. Right. And it's the Alano fires three medium guns at the Taranto. Again, it straddles us, but without actually doing much damage. I'm thinking it's going to be very lucky if it does get a shot that does any real damage against us. Um, it did fire one of its medium guns at us as well. So no, nothing else, else happening in through there. The guys are loading. There we go. So we fired um, five three-inch guns and we got two hits. So we can sort of um, just see, cannot inspect enemy ships now, so we can't actually see what's going on. Uh, we can't see anything on here either at this stage. So all we can hope for is to sort of see some changes that occur back in through this side but no real there's no real damage done with a little three inch but it, it you know there's always a chance uh, i think we have to get in a bit closer so let's just change our angle they've changed angle at the same time they're going to try to shorten that angle one if we did we missed Getting very, very tight now. Let's have a look and see if we can spot the other ship. So the battleship has now moved way up, up into there. So we know it's sort of now leaving. So we, we'll just try to destroy this um, this corvette. Now these aren't worth a hell of a lot, but it's still it's still a, a ship. Okay, we're done again with our three-inch guns, and so we're getting we're getting hits on the ship. Again, we'd have to be lucky to break through its armour. It is fairly well armoured for a small ship. Quite often these corvettes don't have anything. Okay, it did fire two light guns at us, and it did actually hit us. The hit the Taranto turret Y, and it hit the actual side of the turret. Uh, we then fire two of the three-inch guns. We scored one hit. Again, we don't get to see the same sort of level of detail. So turret Y, I think, is the one at the back. So there was actually a hit back in here. But uh, we didn't actually sort of, no, nothing much else has really happened in through there. It's trying to evade. Fire two of its medium guns. We'll just keep it going. I might now just go straight at it. We'll just try to close the gap. If we look and see where our um, torpedoes. We do actually have forward torpedo mounts of this particular one, and aft as well. We also got uh, port broadside and starboard. So we do actually have, um, so we can actually fire torpedoes from any direction. This is probably not really worth a torpedo, this particular ship. So it fires two of the three inch guns and scored one a hit again. Uh, fires one, we, we missed it. Okay, we're now within torpedo range. Fires two three-inch guns, one hit. The closer we get to it, the better off we're going to be. So we've got the um, yeah two-inch two-inch armor on on these little ships is actually quite a lot. So let's now just go sideways and we'll um, try to get some more broadsides on it with the smaller guns. Let's make sure that they're all facing out. Yep, they are. So we should get some. Some good short range shots on this one. It's trying to shorten that, that range again. Let's just let it one shot go in. Uh, yep, so two three inch guns with one hit. Fires medium guns, straddled. Let's just go sideways. Yep, five uh, three inch guns, one hit there again as well. Oh, okay, so the, it fired two medium guns, and it did get one hit with one of its medium guns. And so the, um, the, the, the with what actually happened there, let's just go and open this one up even more. Um, okay, so we've got, a, there's a fair bit going on here. Uh, so we can see that through here that the uh, Taranto engine room hit, um, it hit on our belt. Uh, so the, the shell burst on the armor deck, 
and the superstructure was damaged by splinters. So if we just hover over this one, we've got slight, slight damage uh, on, our, on our light cruiser. So a bit of a lucky hit. So the splinters actually da damage the superstructure. So it's only very, very light. There won't be any real issues with... Um, so the structure has taken minor, minor damage in, in the flotation. Now, we don't know what damage has happened to their ship because we can't actually evaluate that. So that's actually all that's actually happened there for us. I'll just move that one back down. And if I highlight that... Yeah, so if I ho hover over that way, we can sort of then get to see it. Let's just keep on going. So we're again firing two uh, two guns. We get two hits, and the, the target was straddled. So we actually now that's one of our bigger guns. This one should start to do some damage. You know, like we should start to sort of get some. Um, they've actually got bigger guns than what we've got, but we've got more guns firing at them. And we fired another uh, five-inch gun there. One one more hit. Um, some more smoke there than what we saw there before. Light damage. Okay, it's still traveling at 15 knots. Let's just allow it to do a few other things. Let's move this one down. And then come around. I'll just keep within torpedo range of it. It's um, for us, it's not just, it's a good thing for us. Let's move this one around. course when we get in close they're also going to then be able to do other damage against us as well i'll keep on i'll keep on playing these these battles even though it means that the uh, time is blowing out on these particular episodes but i'll still just keep it going now this is the Toronto second battery was hit and it actually broke through so um so that's actually again a bit of a problem for us uh, if you have a bit of a look we now actually have more structural damage than what we had before so we are now taking a little bit of damage. Um, I think our guns would still probably be okay, but that's actually sort of where things did actually occur. Yeah, the guns are all look, look all okay. So secondary battery did actually take the hits in through that one there. Again, we've kept on firing at it. We have done damage to it. So five three-inch guns, two hits. Uh, fires its medium gun and actually that's a critical hit it actually hit our belt and broke through the belt and actually hit our engine room so now we're going to have other problems so we now actually have a maximum speed of 16 so we are traveling at our maximum speed at this point in time uh, we do have some flo flooding now going back in so this is actually <laughs> they've had some very very lucky hits on us unfortunately uh, the Italia is still moving in and I'll probably get the Italia to um, to try to finish this off uh, if we can if we can catch up with it. We'll just try to do a little bit more damage. I have to be careful now with the flotation. So we might even start to spin back around the other way. It's actually coming around as well at the same time. The Italia is now moving in. So we, we might even send it back to Bari, uh, our, our particular ship. Fires uh, two five-inch guns, one hit. So we are getting hits on it, and it's still it's down to ten knots now with medium damage. Hmm. Let's have a look and see if we've actually been able to fix. The, no, the flooding is still actually going in. It's only mild flooding. It's it's not terribly bad. Uh, if we look at the log entries, we can sort of see and sort of see that the um, this is the sort of hits that have come back in. Uh, so we've had a couple of hits, but we've had a couple that have actually broken through. So uh, the last couple of hits have really sort of done some damage. So, um, yeah, this is a, a problem. Yeah, hitting, going through the belts, like the two-inch belt. So their, their six-inch guns can do some damage. Now, against our battleship, not so much. It's just back up to 15 knots again. Um, let's just keep the Italia coming down. Italia is going to be able to open up fairly soon. Let's keep these firing away. Just check our flooding. 
Yeah, so flooding is almost under, under control now. Yeah, okay, Torrento has limited the flooding now, so that's that's fine. So I think we're actually okay. Let's just go underneath this thing. Okay, we're straddling without hits. And the Italia, almost ready. Okay, we're down to 50% of the ammo. This is okay. This is the only ship I think we have to really sort of uh, worry about now. I think the battleship has gone home. Here comes the Italia. That should be almost within range now. So it's going to be able to then use its um, its big 13-inch um, guns, but it's going to be wildly inaccurate. <laughs> so it's not going to do much. Okay, so we're now actually getting the, um, we're on the right angle. I'm going to move this one up to um, 16 as well now. We still haven't opened fire on it yet. Try to get the broadsides happening if we can. Maximum is 16 for this ship. It takes a long time to load these guns. These are, um, if we have a look at the actual guns themselves, these are 13 inch, but these are um, 13 inch at negative three, which is wildly, wildly bad. You know, like it really is terrible. So um, um, it it does it's, it will break through the the belts at you know at, at ranges if we can get there. But it's um, like the actual rate of fire is at zero at this stage. So if you look at the details, it's not even telling us what the details actually are. Hit chance is tiny with these. Uh, we need to we need to be getting closer actually. Yeah, they, even though they're big guns and bigger than what we can actually put on ships, they're um, they're really really bad. And I need to just get some good shots in on, on this thing. Looks like the uh, range is bigger on the small guns that we actually have than on the big 13 inch guns. Yeah, no log entries at all for the Italia. Oh, dusk is coming. <laughs> Looks like we're uh, running out of time. Yeah, 30 minutes before sunset. Well, let's just try to get in a bit closer. See if we can sink this. It should have taken a bit of damage, but we, we can't tell what it's actually got just yet. The Italia is now really closing in on it, actually. It still hasn't really opened up, though. Now it's firing, but will it hit? Probably not. Taranto fires, so we're still getting hits with our with the Taranto, so it's it's getting the hits in. Uh, at least the Italia is doing something.
Ranto again. You can see the value of having um, good quality guns <laughs> as opposed to these negative threes that we have on the Italia. Um, yeah, the rate of fire is very, very small. Uh, it has fired 36 secondary guns, 36 rounds. It's got three rounds in through there. Using deliberate fire here. The target, um, now this is the accuracy, is actually pretty good for the secondary guns on the Italia. Uh, the rate of fire, 1.65, which is actually not bad as well. So the rate of fire is actually not going to be too bad with these guns. These are six inches as well, and there's a fair few of them on the actual ship itself. So um, we'll just let it continue on. I think there's a fair few of them, or maybe there's not. No, it's only um, uh, one gun. And the tertiary guns have only got a couple. So these are this is a very, very poor design, actually. I can't wait to be able to replace this. It re it's relying on the big 13-inch guns, and it just doesn't have the ability to do it. Actually, what does it have with torpedoes? Broadside torpedoes. Okay, so let's just move in close. hit at it. Okay, we've now hit it again. This is the two three-inch guns from the Trento. The Trento is a better ship than the Italia. You know, it's much, much smaller, but it's actually, you know, I'm actually liking what it does better. If we can get a to lucky torpedo hit in, I will take it at this stage. I would love to kill these off. Again, with just only with three inch guns, unfortunately. Here comes night time. I can still see it though, so we should be able to sort of tra track it down. Three inch guns from the Taranto again. It's traveling at 10 knots. Let's go and change these down to 10 knots as well. And we've got medium damage on there now. So that's going to move around, so we'll do the same. is taking a lot longer to uh, turn. The only thing going for the Italia is it's, it does have like a lot of protection. It's the only saving grace that it actually has. Come on guys, you can do it. I might just let the game do it itself now. See what it does. Okay, we've now lost sight of it. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Let's let the game run out now. Hope you've been enjoying the series, guys. It's um, it's it's a game that I I've, I can sort of. I know it's going to have like limited appeal to you know to certain audiences. Here we go. It's the next morning now, um, and there we go. No opposing ships are in sight. They've gone okay. So we did actually do medium damage um, to our like we've got medium damage into our light cruiser, unfortunately, and we did medium damage or heavy did heavy damage ultimately to the um, to the corvette. Um, only one battleship participated. That's all okay. Um, again, we've got 
a lot of points that came back back out of this one. So it did a good job. Their, their ship did a good job against our light cruiser. Um, we'll just click on close and get out of that one. Minor victory. And what do we pick up? Now we can see that through here, we're not getting a hell of a lot. The Messina that's raiding is not going to pick up a hell of a lot of merchantmen while we've actually got a blockade going. That's been pretty much the whole war. So we're not getting massive amounts of victory points from the raider. We may pull the raider back in and just have it available as, our, as part of our main fleet. I think we might just do that now. Um, we'll just close that one off. And uh, so we'll just go back into the, um, the Messina and just go back to the active fleet. So that'll, that'll go back into there. The Taranto is now going is now in for repairs. Um, we now have, yep, yeah, these are all sort of ready to go. We're still working up with the Regina Alina. So that will then give us a, um, another battleship fairly soon. And then we've also then just got ships under construction. One more month and we get the Vittorio Emanuel. And uh, three more months after that, we get the Regina Margarita. Unfortunately, the um, we don't know what this one's like. Let's have a look at the design, open the design of this one. This looks better than the other one already. It's got it's only 16 speed. It's got a belt of, of, of 11, but no extended belts. And it's still only narrow. So this is still going to be a bit of a problem. These are not great ships. 10 inch guns, at least it's better quality than the 13 inch that we've been using so 10 inch i think i feel more comfortable with these um i'm think i'm feeling much more comfortable with actually uh just cruisers to be honest at this stage so when we redesign i don't know which way, which way i'll go i may redesign a battleship i have to think about this i think when we get closer to the time anyway let's um let's not bother with that one we'll just leave that one where that is these are still big ships the marco polo is a fairly large one and then we've got the AMCs coming in three months' time as well. So we'll, um, we will go back to ships in service. And I will leave it here, guys. So again, it looks like we're only really playing, able to play really one turn at a time uh, while, we, while we do this. But uh, we'll get there. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.